Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss a few men's fashion trends which we'd be happy to never see again. Fashion comes and goes, but often there are things that should just go, as in never come back, go away forever, scrub it from my memory. Now, while we advocate for developing a timeless style, which are resistant to the whims of fashion, some trends do fall in line with our message. For example, we're seeing a comeback of the high-waisted pant. However, there's just as many things we're far less enthusiastic about seeing come back. As Oscar Wilde put it, fashion is a form of ugliness so intolerable we have to alter it every six months. If you're a fan of some of these styles, just remember this is just our personal opinion. Now we focus on things that don't have a long supported history behind them, or things that have such an extreme silhouette we believe that it will date poorly. And no one wants to look back 20 years from now at photos that remind them of their prom. And without further ado, here are our choices for recent style trends which we believe overstayed their welcome. First we have super oversized clothing. The days of Tom Brown's influence on the skinny fit are coming to an end and we're seeing a more relaxed fit start to pop back up. While we're glad that the extra skinny fit is losing steam, as we've explained some of its flaws in this video here, it is important to remember that balance here is the key. Now while we're all forgiving looser silhouettes and pleats their time to shine again, there is a vast difference between what we saw in the 40s and in the 80s. For some of the photos we've been seeing, it looks like the 80s version is winning out. In the 20s and 30s, looser styles still gave men's figures a shape. Now the shapeless blob style is certainly beyond us. Having oversized shoulder pads, drop crotch pants, and tent shirts is an exaggerated silhouette which will swallow up the wearer and makes them almost look like a child wearing their Brig Brothers clothing. Now while brands like Armani might be happy to see that Miami Vice cut return, we aren't so enthusiastic. Finding clothing that fits your body type will always look better on you than looking for a trend that's in vogue at the moment. Now if you're unsure of what that looks like, check out our video here. Number two, distressed denim. Distress or not to distress? That is the question that continues to come up over and over when it comes to jeans. Now we saw this first come up in the 70s through the 90s when wearing acid wash or worn out jeans was the hot new thing. Eventually most people realized that wearing unearned holes in their jeans limited its versatility and then salvage denim got its turn in the spotlight. Now if it looked like a hurricane ripped through your jeans, it's probably not going to be off as appropriate. The tapered dark denim was nice enough to wear for business casual outings, but you still have the ability to wear them casually as well. However, the extremely faded rocker look is popping up again. But unless you're Mick Jagger and his prime, we'd advise you to stay away from the style. A little distressing and signs of wear are fine, but nothing screams, I'm trying to look cool again, like a pair of ravaged jeans. Number three, crossover fanny packs. Has there ever been something so immediately hated and worn ironically that eventually people started wearing it unironically? Now we get that there's a utilitarian purpose to wearing this, but do you really need to stoop to this to avoid looking like you almost are carrying a purse? Now we get that men get the short end of the stick for having stylish ways of handling their everyday carry. Now while we don't expect men to have to carry an attache case with them to the grocery store, do we really need the fanny pack to do this? The Velcro strap and novelty canvas prints don't do anyone any favors in their silhouette. Now, if you truly need the extra space, we highly recommend looking into a leather messenger bag, which is small and light enough for you to be able to put on over your shoulder. This will serve the exact same purpose and look a million times better. You'll thank us later, trust me. Number four, bucket hats. Now we get that fishermen need some love too, but can we do that with sweaters instead? The bucket hat at least brings some attention back to brimmed hats, but there are far better options. Now many of the fast fashion brands that are making these will make them with inferior quality, which means they're gonna break down over time. They also don't have the structure that will complement most face shapes in the best light. The brim is actually too short to really accomplish anything. Now wearing either a wide brimmed fedora or a flat cap will actually produce the same results and actually work with a greater range of outfits. They also have different shapes, which will better suit your face, which we explain more about in our video here. Number five, deliberately clunky dress shoes and sneakers. Most of us already know about the pitfalls of wearing square toed shoes and how they can cheapen an outfit with their shape. Now sneakers are getting their own weird uncle that nobody ever wants to see at their reunions. Now hype beasts have popularized styles like the triple S sneaker. Now these look like a running shoe their grandfather had in the back of their closet and forgot about. The oversized bulk and loud design make it an eyesore running any outfit you were going for and having limited versatility. Now we'd highly recommend going for something like a leather sneaker instead. Its low profile and polished look can make it much more accessible and put together and can even work with some business casual outfits. They also have a much more timeless appeal which will not look out of place a few years from now. Number six, male rompers. 
Did you guys forget about this trend? Well, I'm sorry to remind you. Now, this look came up around 2017 and was picked on pretty heavily from the internet for good reason. The onesie look does not flatter most men for its tight fit and childish appearance. It's also more of a beach look, but you can't even take it off to go swimming. This ironic trend also became a bit of a frat bro staple for a time and fit right at home with wearing a blazer with short shorts and wearing a popped collar. Now, if you want to be taken seriously by others, we think twice about this one. Or better yet, don't think about it at all. Just don't do it. Number seven, leather everything. Leather is one of the best materials around and is a mainstay in virtually any well-dressed man's wardrobe. However, there is such a thing as too much leather in a man's outfit. Now leather jackets are great. Leather accessories are great. Leather shoes are great. The problem occurs when you're trying to wear all of these at the same time with leather pants. Wearing something like a leather jacket and leather pants together creates very little contrast in an outfit and is more so something that you'd see in cyberpunk rather than in a classic wardrobe. The Matrix is a cool movie, but much like the leather duster, it doesn't look as cool in real life. And not to mention, you'd probably be sweating all day long. Number eight, bold floral garments. Now floral is already a difficult enough pattern to get right in a man's wardrobe, as we've explained in our video here. Now while it can work in small doses, this trend will crank it all the way up to an 11. While this bold pattern may have had some exposure in Rococo times, it's important to remember that its bold features are extremely foreign in a modern context. And because of this, it'll draw the eyes of any onlooker away from you and more so onto what you're wearing instead. These floral suits and pants instead will be reminiscent of something seen in the 70s and will be remembered that way. Now, if you like this print, use it in your accessories and focus on things like ties, scarves, and pocket squares. There really can be too much of a good thing when it comes to pattern. Number nine, fashion colors. Every year, some colors are in. Now, while we could support burgundy or olive getting their time in the spotlight over the last few years, we can't say the same for these. We've been seeing some neon colors in bright red, magenta, and orange. Now, these colors are extremely attention-grabbing and will wash out the majority of skin types with their overpowering hues. They're also not colors that tend to blend well, and they're less versatile than their more muted counterparts. Now, believe me, it's unnecessary to walk around looking like a bag of Skittles. Unless you plan on emulating the Joker, we'd suggest staying away from these trendy colors. Number 10, sheer clothing. Clothing is supposed to cover your body, but it appears the memo was missed this year. Now, whether it's sheer jackets or shirts, the biggest issue with the style is that unless you've been blessed or you're working extremely hard for that kind of Statue of David body, you're probably not gonna be looking too great with an exposed midsection. And even if you do, you'd still look better and be taken more seriously if you didn't wear this. Now we get that sci-fi movies are fun, but not everything in Blade Runner needs to be emulated. If you're worried about beating the heat, you can wear lightweight and loosely woven linen clothing, which will give you the same airy properties without losing your dignity in the process. Number 11, man capris. Yes, you heard me right, man capris. Now you might be thinking, men don't wear capris, do they? Well, in fact they do, but outside of overly long shorts and athleisure, it's usually couched as a high water pant with no break. But guess what? That's a capri. A capri pant is anything that falls between shorts and pants, which we would argue would only qualify if it falls between an inch or two of your shoes. Anything beyond this, and the whole ankle and part of the leg is exposed. Now for suits in particular, this kind of trend will ruin an entire suit as there will be no extra fabric to let down when the trend goes out of style. Now it also makes it far less versatile. Will your trendy exposed ankles and loafers be appropriate for a funeral? or at the office. Now lately we can see a lot of suits being cut with the whole ankle bared. Now while this might be necessary for suits that are quite slim, for example, at little to no break to avoid any extra wrinkles at the bottom of the pant. But a relatively high cut pant will throw off the proportions of the suit, shortening the leg. Now when paired with a very slim cut, this has the tendency to bunch up around the knees and at the crotch, creating an overall very wrinkled effect. Number 12, Franken shoes. Franken shoes is just our personal way of describing an athletic bottom shoe that has a more dress style upper, something maybe more commonly seen on a derby brogue. Now we feel this combination just does not work. For the record, this kind of style will not fool anyone. Now it's literally just a sneaker in disguise. Now it's still very much a casual shoe that has the ability to confuse buyers. Is this a real dress shoe? Can I wear this instead of leather sole dress shoes? Now, unless you have issues with your feet that make wearing a leather dress shoe a challenge to wear, stick with either a leather trainer or a leather dress shoe. Now we stand by this even in the case of a loafer. Now loafers are already designed to be a casual, flexible, and comfortable shoe. So why go ahead and slap a trainer sole on it? Now hilariously, this brand charges $325 for that white trainer sole and a leather upper. Don't fall for it. And what is this monstrosity? 
Now it has the obvious white trainer sole, but it has the Oxford lacing system, the most formal of lacing and dress shoes. And yet it's perforated all over like a tennis shoe. And the upper is cognac leather. This is like the pickles and ice cream combination of the shoe world. Just because it's new, doesn't mean you should make it. Shoe companies are under pressure all the time to come up with new things. But there are a world of options already available that you don't need to turn to these kinds of Franken shoes. Number 13, tiny sunglasses. Now these serve more of achieving a type of trendy look than actually serving a real purpose. You know, like keeping the sun out of your eyes. Who would want that? Now when it comes to eyewear, it's very important that you first and foremost are wearing something that fits your face. Then you can start looking at things like colors and polarization levels. Number 14, too much at leisure. Now I'm not gonna lie, I do do this myself, but the reality is there is an appropriate time to and not to wear the style of clothing. All day and every day is not ideal. I have to remind myself sometimes that I might run into someone or go somewhere where I'd like to make a good first impression and wearing shorts and a workout shirt and a cap are usually not going to be the best outfit. Number 15, wearing one color complete from head to toe. And while there are ways where you can wear one color and it looks tasteful, sometimes in a suit, if you wear one color all the way through, it looks a bit like the mafia or like you're an extra in the Men in Black franchise. And when it comes to casual clothing, it can start to look a bit monotonous and sometimes even a bit bland. Try adding a pop of color, even if it's subtle, to your outfit, as I'm sure the onlookers will enjoy a little bit of something different in your outfit. Now today I'm wearing a green lightweight vest along with kind of an oatmeal natural colored long sleeve polo with dark denim. And then I also have on my Fort Belvedere shadow stripe socks in brown and light blue. I also have on a pair of red wing boots as well. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these.